Here's Graham. Play with exceptional beauty, running in a brown jacket, white sash through the first furlong alarm call next to the rails, up on the outside of these main reason. And exceptional beauty, Beijing, and up with the pace, that's your lot, and that's your lot now has come through to settle the issue as to who leads for the first furlong, goes on by length. From Mr. Point Racing second, Beijing Racing third, Island set four, Saronica's five. Behind these comes Benita Ryder in six. And at this stage, favorite mid-division with towards the rear, Lee Grit. But it's that's your lot who leads, setting quite a sensible pace. To Mr. Point in second place, racing third is Saronicus, four next to the rails is Beijing. Then Benita Ryder makes ground on the outside of Little Egret, who has made up uh, quite a bit of ground from the start. Senor Thomas, which are bare lines napping the Guardian, mid-division halfway. That's your lot in the lead from Mr. Point in second. Saronicus third, down towards the halfway stage. A little change up front. And still, that's your lot who leads. From Mr. Point second, Saronicus racing third. Behind these comes Benisa Ryder. Then making ground, Sproston Boyd, Little Egret just in behind these. Then Jewel Venture, Island set next to the rails. Making ground on the inside is Exceptional Beauty. Towards the rear is Fleeting Affair. Milton Byrne, mid-division. Western Dancer starts to improve. But that's your lot next to the rails. Mr. Point, and up on the outside of these, Racing Sproston Boy. Then Saronicus and Beijing. Benisa Ryder and Five Farthings. And Western Dancer and Island set next to the rails. Exceptional Beauty. And now Mr. Point goes on as they level up for home, just over four to race. Mr. Point, Saronicus, and Benisa Ryder. Then Sproston Boy and Five Farthings. That's your lock gives way. Island set starts to improve. Beijing in the hoop sleeve starts to motor two. Um, with just over three to go, Mr. Point gets a reminder as Saronicus in the blue jacket comes to dispute it with Sproston Boy. And just over two and a half to go. Five Farthings comes out of the pack two. And the four in line at the lead of the field with two to go in the William Hill November handicap. A Five Farthings, Sproston Boy, Saronicus. And next to the rails, Mr. Point. Behind these, here comes Jewel Venture and Tony Murray, the horse with a noseband jockey in the blue jacket. Tony's last ride throws down the challenge to Five Farthings, who leads. Five Farthings from Beijing and Jewel Venture. And inside the final furlong, it's Beijing with the hoop sleeves. Five Farthings with the check jacket. Behind these, Jewel Venture. And after these, comes close from Boy. And it's Beijing who asserts for inside the final half furlong. Beijing goes up to the water drive. Beijing by a length. Beijing the winner, Five Farthings second. Jewel Venture third, close from Boy four. Feeding a fair five. And then behind these came Little Egret, followed by Avic uh, Puppy, then Milton Burns, Senor Thomas. Folk dance, runner Pratap, alarm call, island set. Virardi, Saronicus towards the rear main reason. Also in arrears was Mr. Point who showed up early. And the early leader, that's your lot, finished last of all. And so the result of this, the William Hill November handicap, a win for number 18, Beijing, owned by Binfield Manor Farms. Trained at Wantage by Paul Cole and ridden by Richard Quinn. So a double for them on William Hill November Handicap Day. And at 16 to 1 has rewarded her supporters in style. Richard Quinn really had to go to work in the final half furlong as the challengers claim thick and, thick and fast. I thought for one glorious moment Tony Murray was going to bow out on a winner with Jewel Venture. He throws down a challenge. At this stage he's not in the picture. It's Sproston Boy in the red jacket from Five Farthings who comes through to take up the running with two and a half to go. They actually went a stronger pace than I anticipated. I did feel there might not be a good gallop, and that's obviously suited the winner, Beijing, who's been intelligently ridden in, in as much as she's been up with the pace, and she's a stayer, and her stamina wins the day because at this point, with about two to go, Walter Swinburne really sweeps to the front on five farthings, and you'd think the momentum of that run would carry him to victory. Sprouston Boy's still there with two to go, so too is Saronicus, who's been up there all the way, and on the rails, Mr. Point fading out. Dual Venture comes on the outside, Rana Pratap flatters briefly for a minute, but perhaps doesn't see out the trip in this ground. And then Beijing, who's been switched off the rails, slowly but surely renews her challenge. And it's a question of whether five farthings can last out. Now Walter Swinburne goes for the whip, and you can see she's a t suddenly from going really well, she's a tiring filly. Beijing didn't have her acceleration or the acceleration of five farthings over two out when that filly quickened, but she's worn her down inside the final furlong. Richard Quinn, you see there, pulls his stick through, puts it down because he knows he's won. Nothing's going to come from behind in this ground, and his filly runs on really well to win uh, in game fashion. Five farthings being eased down now is going to hold on to second. Dual Venture comes on the outside and Sproston boys run a very good race to finish fourth. Those four seem clear.